Stephen Moore, what do you think about the president's announcement that this is the first of many? It looks like there could be a major trade war, which would result in enormous economic implications for the United States and higher prices for American consumers for a lot of products. So I'm of two minds on this. Uh, I'm a free trade guy, so I don't like to see trade barriers uh, rising, and, and that certainly is happening under Trump. And, and that will have negative implications for U.S. consumers. So you're right about that, Wolf. Chinese uh, uh, exports to the United States, exactly wh right. whether you go to a Walmart, you go to another store, families want to buy clothes for their kids, books for their yeah, kids, cell phones, cell phones or something what other import. products, the, uh, the cost right. of those are going to go up. This is like a hidden tax when you impose a tariff like that. It is. So that's all true. Now let me say something in defense of the president on this. Number one, you know, I was with Donald Trump on the campaign. This is exactly what he said he was going to do. And I, and I think that if, it, if he had taken a more conventional Republican position on trade, Hillary Clinton would be president today. The, this position um, is actually popular with a lot of voters, especially in the, those industrial uh, uh, states that, that feel like their jobs have been taken because of trade with Mexico and China and other countries. Um, the other thing, you know, that I think is important here is this issue of intellectual property. This is a big deal for the United States, and I think the president is right about this. I mean, as we advance um, as, a, as a, a nation, more and more of what we produce is, an, is intellectual property. And you're, but you're, and you're pointing out that, uh, to our viewers that China steals that's right. U.S. intellectual now, I think property. That, that's right. And, and this is the way the president is responding by imposing tariffs. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And the question is um, whether or not you can, I mean, and I don't know the answer to this, but I think this is the question. Can we have free and fair trade with a country that is stealing $500 billion from us every year? And that, that's well, an open question. That's the trade, the, that's how much, that's the trade surplus no, that China has. No, no, that's, that's how much it's estimated that China is stealing from and us every year. You get the $500 billion. That estimate. comes from a report that just came out um, not long ago, a couple weeks ago, from a very credible From a U.S. Source. government report? Yeah. Um, you know, I'll look it up. But, I mean, okay. people are citing it as kind of one of the definitive studies on how much is being stolen. The president, you know, Gloria, did, as a candidate, repeatedly go after China, sure. the Europeans, the North American Free D Trade Agreement with Canada and Mexico, other countries that have trade surpluses with the United States. And now his argument is, I'm delivering what I campaigned on. Right. And I think the question is, will this, will the impact of this wipe out the positive impact of his, of his tax cuts? Look at the stock market today. Exactly. It's Look at the stock market 300. today. And I think that's the political question that members of Congress are asking, which is, we told you we were going to put more money in your pocket, and now maybe we're taking that money out of your pocket. That's the problem. You know, Rana, the, uh, the argument now is, the fear is, uh, that the, the Chinese will impose uh, tariffs on all sorts of U.S. agricultural exports, whether wheat or soybeans or corn, uh, a lot of products, meat, uh, pork-related products, uh, and that's going to hit a lot of U.S. agriculture and farming states, whether Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, states like that. Uh, their, their lawmakers are not happy, uh, and they're mostly Republicans, with what the president is doing okay. out of fear that this is going to cost far American farmers a lot of money. Absolutely. I mean, you're seeing agricultural trade industries already coming out and complaining about these tariffs. And, you know, you're hitting the nail on the head. Tariffs are something that a lot of Republicans oppose, you know. I mean, most Republicans are, are free traders. Um, the thing that really concerns me, this isn't a sexy point to make, but, you know, China, yes, China steals intellectual property. Absolutely. Stephen's right. The president himself is right on that. But China also has been doing a lot in the last 20 years to enrich its own supply chain, its own ecosystem. You know, we should have been doing all of that stuff all along as well. And I would like to see the president talking more about how to bolster the Rust Belt instead of slap on tariffs that are actually going to end up hurting his base, ironically. You know, people think this is great. Okay, maybe we get 10,000 steel jobs. We're going to lose 80,000 uh, manufacturing jobs because input costs are going to go up, and that's going to make products more expensive on global markets. Well, Rana, we did do something important to, you know, improve our economic climate, and that happened uh, two or three months ago with the tax cut, which is having well, a which very significant Well, which is going to be wiped out if we have a trade right. war. Well, no, look, I mean, I think there's something to that. I mean, a trade, but, but, I mean, I think one point to think about, and, and this is part, Wolf, of, I think, this kind of new kind of Trump trade doctrine, if you will, which is, you know, I think China's playing a very dangerous game here as well. Um, 
Trump understands, and I think this is an unquestionable truth, that China needs to trade with the United States more than we need to trade with them. It's unquestionable. I mean, look, you're right. If we can't trade with China, we have to pay more for toothpaste and maybe $20 more for a cell phone. If they can't mm -hmm. trade with us, they go into a recession. So they need access, Rana, in my opinion, to America's you know, $3 trillion consumer market. And if, they, if this becomes a tit for tat, this is where I think Trump, sometimes he doesn't say exactly what he means. When he said, we can win a t trade war, I think what he meant to say is, China has more to lose here, so they better cooperate with us. Well, what? it looks like they're going to retaliate, that, and yeah. you know, and that could have enormous implications. The U.S. economy, the global economy, if unless they can head but, that but off. Nobody's answered the question yet. But I mean, Rana, you you're about. How do we go forward if they continue to steal, if they continue to be well, a bad actor? Rana, what, what do you think if, uh, if the Chinese continue this intellectual property uh, you, uh, theft? Uh, what know, should the U.S. You, do about it short of a trade war? Well, okay, for starters, China has already announced its intention in its five-year plan to be independent of U.S. technology uh, in the next 10 years or so. And that's a goal that they're actually moving forward. I spend a lot of time talking to Chinese entrepreneurs. Um, I'm not uh, in any way saying that their model is the correct one, but they are doing a lot to support uh, local players, to support their local tech ecosystem. We should be doing more of that. I also would like to see us actually talking with Europe and getting in alignment about how to deal with China, it would be much more powerful for the U.S. and the EU to be on the same page rather than having the U.S. go off and start, uh, you know, start a, a unilateral trade war. You know, it's interesting, uh, Gloria, there was a serious split among the president's economic advisors whether to go into this <laughs> potential, this fear of a trade war by imposing tariffs mm -hmm. uh, on steel and aluminum imports into the United States and now $60 billion on tariffs. It was originally thought it was going to be 50. Some of his rec advisors recommended 30 billion. Now the president just said $60 billion uh, and that's just the start uh, of China. Gary Cohen, Left. who was the head of the National Economic Council, he resigned. He didn't think this was a good idea. Larry Kudlow, who's being brought into the, uh, the administration, he doesn't think it's a good idea either, he but he sees it as a negotiating ploy to try to get better deals with these other countries. Right, and I think this is reflective. We've been talking about this over the last week or so uh, of the president's newfound sense that I can do this and I know how to run this uh, country and I know how to run the White House and I'm not going to depend on these people anymore to tell me what to think. I succeeded by telling the voters this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it and I'm not going to have anybody in my White House who is going to stop me. So while Larry Kudlow disagrees with him, I was told by a source the president doesn't believe Kudlow would quit over it, which he won't because he's not even there. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it, is a, it, is, you know, it is a different president, uh, you know, one that is kind of uh, unshackled, if you will. And with Cohn gone, I don't know who's going to argue against this. I mean, Kudlow mm. might. We know that. Well, look, I just said, you know, I, I'm very close it. to Larry. And, right. and he, you know, one of the reassuring things of having Larry over there now is he will be a, a voice uh, for, for free markets and free trade. Um, he, you know, I've talked to him a lot about this. He does think that getting tough with China uh, may, maybe now is the right time for that. Uh, Rana, I mean, look, the one thing I disagree with you and you said is that, that somehow they're going to overtake right. us technologically. And China is so far behind us technologically. All all China does is is copycat oh, you know our very quickly, Rana. You know go what? Ahead. I'm going mean, to I'm going to push back strong on that. Well, what, what, uh, what have not... they ever What have they ever produced that that hasn't been a te copycat technology? You know what? We've... There are more people engaging in digital commerce in China than there are in the U.S. Yeah, Chinese but they have actually. Excuse they have me. A lot Chinese of people are doing actually it, but they... the Chinese are actually yeah. very well poised in certain we'll strategic see. areas, artificial intelligence, etc. Lots of reasons for that, but it's it is very important for us to actually develop our own technologies, our own supply Fort. chains, rather than just getting into a trade war. And I haven't seen the president doing enough uh, of that. And also, policy has been totally incoherent. You know, I mean, we're, we're protecting, you know, we're saying, okay, Broadcom, you can't come in and buy Qualcomm, and yet we're letting some of the largest tech players uh, in Silicon Valley do plenty of business in China. We need a coherent policy. If we're gonna just, if we're gonna start a trade war, well, let's, let's at least have a coherent dollar, policy. If we're gonna raise if we're gonna have sixty billion dollars of ter tariffs, I mean that's that's a pretty significant uh, wallop against the president China. says that's just the first of many. And he's not just going after China, he's mentioning South Korea, Japan, the European Union, mentioning NAFTA, the North, North American Free Trade Agreement. He says the WTO, the World Trade Organization, is a disaster for the United States. Very strong words from the president uh, and he says China better reduce that trade deficit by a hundred billion dollars and they better do it
quickly, otherwise more are on the way. Uh, and that are means gonna, they're going to have to buy more of our stuff, not less of our let's stuff. See right? what, let's I mean, see what happens. This right. Very, very uh, sensitive moment. Look at the Dow Jones. It's down almost mm -hmm. 400 points right now. We'll continue to watch that. Uh,